My name is uh, Jeff, and uh, what I do is I build data visualizations. Uh, so I, over the last few months, I've been building uh, a number of data visualizations using the data from Wikipedia, uh, especially the revision, uh, the edit data from Wikipedia. So I'll, I'll show you some of the graphs and uh, what they can do, and then I'll explain what, what inferences we can get from them in a bit. Uh, so, so this is uh, one of the graphs that I've built. And as the title says, what it tries to show you is the retention of editors over time in the English Wikipedia. Uh, so what's interesting about the graph is that it's interactive. So I'll, I'll show you how it changes. There's a brush on top. Um, so if I change the value, is it clear? So right now, all you see is a lot of, so right now what you see, it's a lot of color here, doesn't look very interesting. But one, once I start filtering here, you can see that there's a, there's a huge white patch here is the white patch clear? Can you guys see it or? So, yeah, so, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I'll do is uh, I'll start explaining what the accesses are and what inferences we can draw from this. So, so I'll just briefly explain the observations we'll be looking at today. Um, so, so the first one is something that we all know that the retention of editors on the English Wikipedia decreased from pre-2007 levels and kind of flatlined. Uh, but the retention levels are different in the other major wikis like the German wiki, the French wiki, etc. Uh, so the second rather interesting result that we can see from all the data I'm going to show today is that the decrease in the monthly editor activity is not only because the newcomers are leaving faster, it is also because the editors who've been in the project for say three months or four months or five months, their rate of leaving has also increased when compared to pre-2007 levels. Uh, that, I think, is an interesting result for all of us. Uh, the third one is also rather interesting because uh, what we'll be seeing is for most articles that are created post-2007, 2008, once they are created, they hardly see any subsequent edit activity. Uh, so once I show you the graphs for all these, it, the, it'll probably make more sense and there'll be more uh, interesting questions. So before I start showing you the graphs, uh, there are some basic definitions we'll have to look at. Uh, so uh, I'm using something called an active editor. Uh, th this is the traditional uh, definition of an active editor that we've been using in the community for some time now. Uh, so so m the definition of an active editor that I'm using is someone who's made at least five edits in a month in an in the article space. Uh, also, the other thing I'm doing is I'm grouping editors by the month of their first edit. So let's say there are a number of editors who started editing in uh, January 2001. So I put them into the Jan 01 bucket. I'm, I'm grouping editors by the month in which they started editing. Uh, so now we'll look at the editor retention graph. Uh, retention is a bit tricky because sometimes there are months when an editor doesn't make any edit, but in the subsequent months, uh, they make edits. So, so retention is a bit tricky to cal calculate, but 
I'm going to use a very simple definition. So how I'm going to calculate retention is I'm going to take the total number of active editors who've joined in a month as the total for that cohort. And then I'm going to see the percentage of them who, who are active in subsequent months. Yeah. Uh, so so this, I, in this slide, I'm explaining the axes. Uh, I'm going to explain the y-axis first. Uh, on the y-axis, what you'll find is the editor groups. So people who joined, oh, sorry. So people who joined in Jan 01 will be represented in this line. Uh, Jan 02 will be represented in that, in, in that line. So basically, the groups are on the x-axis. So, sorry, on the y-axis. And time runs on the x-axis. So if you want to look at the activity of a given group, you just have to look at that line. So the x-axis will give you the activity of that group in subsequent uh, months. So what the filter lets you do is it, it lets you filter the data points in the graph by the percentage of retention. So, so what's interesting is th this is the graph for the, this is the retention graph for the English Wikipedia. And when you set the threshold at more than 5%, what you'll see is starting in around the end of 2005, there's this huge drop in retention. So, 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 so what, what you guys might find interesting is the number of active editors actually starts declining in around March 2007. But what, what, what you see is that the retention has started dropping almost two years before that. Two years before the peaking of the active editors, you see the retention dropping very uh, dramatically. So yeah, so, so from the previous graphs, uh, these are the interesting results. The editor retention level starts falling off in uh, December 05, much before the peak, uh, peak levels are reached in March 07. And these days, the retention is steady. Uh, only around 5% of active editors continue after six to eight months. So if, if you, I can actually show you this graph once we run through the presentation. Uh, what about other languages? Uh, the retention in German has also fallen too, but not as dramatic as in the case of English. It, it continues at a very higher level. Uh, interestingly, languages like Chinese show uh, an increased retention of late. Uh, so these are the graphs for, uh, for German, Russian, and Chinese. Chinese, you can see that the retention levels have actually increased these days. And th though, you, though you can see a fall in German, it isn't as bad as the case in uh, English. So, so, so this is the next uh, graph we'll be looking at. Uh, it looks at the monthly editor activity uh, split by the contribution from different editor groups. So for example, any given month has contribution from editors who joined in the first month of the wiki, the second month of the wiki, the third month of the wiki. So, so what? So how the graph looks is, uh, oops, the the total uh, edit active edit activity in a month is split by these the contribution from each editor group. Uh, so why is this interesting? We'll see why this is interesting. And like before. Time runs on the x-axis, and the activity from different uh, groups is on the y-axis. And you can filter by the age of the group. Um, so, so I'll tell you why uh, this gets interesting. So what I've done here is I have filtered the graph to show only the contribution of people who are joining in a month from the total of that month. So, so what you see is this is the contribution of the people who joined in that month 
versus the total in that month. So the total activity in a month is from people who joined in the previous month, the one before that, so and so forth. W what you can see is that the activity increases till around 2007 and then it kind of decreases and it flattens. Uh, so so this, this is interesting because uh, when you read this graph along with the previous graph, what we can infer is that the decline in total number of monthly active editors is because the retention has fallen and also the number of active editors joining in a given month has fallen. So it's a combination of both that has resulted in the number of active editors in a month decreasing these days. So, so these are the different monthly activity uh, graphs, the different languages. You can see that for Chinese, the monthly active, uh, monthly active editors is actually kind of increasing. For French, it's kind of stable and for German, it's decreasing a bit. Um, so, so this is an interesting graph, but probably doesn't make sense when you look at it uh, from afar. But if you, if you look at it closely, what you can observe is there are seasonal edit patterns, uh, meaning to say that if you if you look closely at the graph once my presentation is over you'll realize that every january there is a spike in activity so probably uh, a lot of people edit during their vacations or some such reason but what what what's interesting is every jan there is an increase in activity uh, these are just the specifics from the graph you guys could take a look uh, when you have the time so s similar to the editor retention graphs, what I've also created are uh, art article edit activity uh, retention graphs. Uh, same kind of definitions. The graph also can be read in the same way. Uh, so this is the article activity retention graph for German. So what's interesting is there is this huge uh, white patch. So, so it's mostly the articles that were initially created that continue to see a lot of edit activity. Uh, and the articles that have been created after, say, 2007, see, see hardly any subsequent edit activity. Most of the edits happen on the initially created more important articles. Not necessarily more important articles, but the articles that were created in the first few years of the wiki. So, yeah. Uh, so, so what we've seen in, in that previous graph is that uh, most of the articles created till 2007 continue to see a lot of subsequent activity, edit activity, but the ones after that hardly see any edit activity, which, which is really, which might be really surprising, um, might sound very obvious because the important articles have been created already, so the newer ones don't need too much of activity. Or maybe articles that are created these days are really well written that you don't have to edit it too many times, it's already well written the, very, the first time you write it. So, so some of the some of the interesting observations we've seen today is that the decline in the act monthly active editors in English is because of a combined effect of new decrease in the number of newcomers and also because slightly older people like people who've been editing for five months, six months, three months, four months, they are they've also started leaving at a higher rate. And uh, when you look at the edit activity on articles, generally it's the uh, articles that have been created prior to 2007 that continue to see uh, 
edit activity. The ones after that generally don't get too much of edit activity. Once it's written, it's just uh, left. Uh, retention rates are different for different wikis. English has a lesser retention. German, for example, though, is like is a very large wiki, but has a much higher retention than English. An interesting other observation is seasonal edit patterns. So you see more edit activity in January. Uh, so yeah, if you go to this link, you'll find the other ideas I'm working on. Uh, these are the relevant uh, links to the, the to the code, to the data, to the graphs, etc. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Any? I'm happy to look at answer any questions. Hi. Um, you said that uh, the articles that were still actively edited were the ones from before 2008, 2007. Um, the data, just in your slides I was reading through, uh, you said you couldn't do the query on English Wikipedia. So is that statement still true for English Wikipedia or is it for other languages? So I, uh, so in, in my slides I haven't added it, but I have generated it for English, but I haven't uh, put it up. Okay, but it is true. That's the main thing. That's, that's the important yeah. part. Perfect. So it is true for the other land, yeah. Okay. Hello. Hi. Hi. Well, uh, I think the analysis is uh, good, but uh, are there any policy implications from all these figures? S sorry, the, uh, are there any policy implications of all these figures and conclusions that uh, you get in the Policy analysis? implications? Uh, I mean, what should we do after we know these figures? Yeah, so I mean, if, so what we've observed is that even people who've stayed in the wiki for say two or three months are leaving at a higher rate than they were leaving at 2000, in 2005 or 2006. That probably means we should also focus on helping them stay longer. So. So I think generally the focus right now is to help the newcomers stay on for longer. Uh, we should probably also focus a bit on, you know, the... Yeah, we know generally what to do, but how to do it? I mean, have you ever thought about developing any uh, activities or projects or... No, not, not yet. Any policies? Not yet. I don't have uh, solutions. <laughs> so I my suggestion is uh, in future to work about the policies that we should, because, you know, uh, to have an analysis done about uh, what the activity rates are and how the uh, newcomers uh, behave when joining Wikipedia is uh, just one side of uh, the whole story. And the second one is the more practical one. I'd, I'd like if uh, people could join me in this work because I can't do everything myself. Okay. <laughs> so. okay. Uh, I think the browser manage the, the password management of the browsers has improved a lot in the last years. So a lot of users don't need to create a new use user because they have forgotten their password. So for old for old for the old values of 2007, we should uh, know this fact. So, so what what does that imply? I mean. I think the, the numbers of the, the the user numbers of 2007 are too high. Okay. Because the now we have more users which use the same password and so the same user for a long time. So so are you saying that uh, the users in 2007 would keep creating new accounts because they forgot their old passwords? Is yes. that what you're saying? For for users that make only one two edits in two three months, they forgot the password. They create a new account. Yeah. That's something I'll have to investigate. I, yeah. I, I have three questions, Jeff. Two are very simple. Can I give you all three at once? 
Yeah, yeah, I'll try to answer them okay. if there's the, enough time. The two simple ones are, uh, can we look better at these slides if we get on uh, the program for this event and find a link? Yeah, you can, uh, yes. Okay. The, the other simple one is I would like to know, but then I'll ask you two, the simple and the, uh, the more complex. The simple is if you have also looked at uh, data for the Italian uh, Wikipedia, IT, uh, Wikipedia, and the more complicated one, and then I'll leave you with that, give back the microphone, is um, when we train uh, high school or uh, early college age uh, editors, uh, when we get them involved in editing Wikipedia, when we show them how to use e Wikipedia as a tool, uh, can you uh, make any speculate about the personality types that uh, lead to um, becoming an editor who will be retained long term. Do we have any sense of what kinds of interests have kept people active for a longer period of time? What kind of articles perhaps uh, made people stay longer? Thank you. So, uh, answering the first question, I have generated the graphs for the Italian language Wikipedia but I haven't analyzed it as much as I have analyzed the English uh, graphs and the German graphs. So you guys are free to look at it and tell me if there's something wrong in it or the, if there's something interesting in it. Uh, answering the second question, I do not know what character traits lead to um, better editors. I, I have no clue on that. Maybe the research team and the foundation might have uh, clues to that. Um, I think it's very interesting, but I don't know if you can try this tool on other projects and see if the uh, growing up of other projects made some migration of contributors from Wikipedia to other projects. And uh, maybe the retention is is going uh, down for some contributors because they just do contribution on other projects more than in Wikipedia. I don't know if you can have a, an idea about this. So, so what you're suggesting is uh, people migrate from one project to another, and if you look at the aggregate, maybe their retention is higher and also their contribution is higher. Uh, so I haven't uh, really tried to look at uh, users from one project to another project, but people have been uh, suggesting that I look at translations from one language to another. Uh, so whether people are moving from English to German or from Spanish to Russian, Th that is something I'm thinking of looking at, but from one project to another, I haven't uh, thought of looking at, but probably I should. Um, looking at the articles, I wanted to know whether you tried to find out, I think there's always a lot of articles that need to be updated regularly, like those about living people who are getting new things done that should be in the article, compared to the articles about, let's say, a mountain, where you can have the article written excellently in the beginning, and nothing will usually happen that needs to be added. So did you try to go through the categories and try to find um, if there are articles that should be updated compared to the articles that can just stay as they are? Uh, so, so I have uh, slight two, two answers for that. Uh, no, I haven't looked at the content of the articles, uh, but what you're saying is probably true. There are sets of articles that can be just written uh, for example, like a mountain, which doesn't change its properties, but you could have an article about, say, uh, AC Milan, uh, the football team, which uh, keeps playing new matches, so results are more, so they could uh, keep getting edited more often. Uh, but then there could be those kind of articles, say, created in 2009, and also those kind of articles created in 2005. So, uh, so I would ask you another question, that is, why aren't those articles which need to be edited today getting as much edit activity as the ones which were created in 2005? So, so yeah, I don't have, I, I haven't looked at the kind of, uh, I, I haven't looked at articles in the way you were telling me, but I think if that were true, that should be true today too. So. Uh, 
so how you uh, tried looking at uh, even smaller, like medium-sized wikis, and uh, maybe there are some of them uh, who stand out like having a great user attention or increasing rate. So maybe uh, if we found some these medium-sized wikis having uh, like uh, great results, maybe then we should uh, try to find the reasons uh, if maybe uh, something can be copied to the uh, things peop other people are doing. Uh, have you how much would it take to generate like uh, these graphs for, uh, for example, 50 biggest wikis? So, uh, so I've already generated uh, the data for a lot of medium-sized wikis. It wouldn't, it, it's just a script. I can just add the names of the languages and I can generate the, uh, I can generate probably all the 350 or 400 wikis. Not much work. Uh, but the difficulty would be in analyzing all those graphs. Uh, so if you guys are interested, you should definitely look at uh, the data. Because I can't, per, I can't uh, look through like the data for the 400 wikis or 300 wikis and look at all the different graphs because there's retention, there's monthly activity. Uh, so there isn't a technical challenge in gen generating them. There's a challenge in actually s looking at the data and analyzing it. So I'm happy to generate the graphs for all the languages. Well, first of all, um, I really, really uh, enjoyed your uh, presentation because it gives a visual insight into what might be happening in our projects. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. For example, one of the theories that like, um, we had um, about the editor decline was that maybe the, these projects that have, um, that are in a, in a, in a, in a, in a um, special stage in their development that have already, um, that do already have all these um, important articles, um, they need a different kind of attention. They don't need n people who create new um, articles, but they need people um, who maintain existing articles, which is a different set of like, work and maybe is interesting to different set of people, or as your like um, presentation suggests, might not be as interesting as creating new articles. So um, I think it helps to really understand more about what is going on. Yeah, so, uh, so to answer your question, this is a work in progress. Uh, so I think one of the things I should focus on is, is to really understand what the newcomers are doing in a very large wiki like English versus a small or medium one. Uh, so that will probably give us more insight into what exactly is happening when a newcomer joins. And what kind of articles are the newcomers editing? Are they creating new articles or are they adding content or are they just doing typo fixes? That'd be really interesting to look at. Uh, what I have is not a question, but a suggestion. Since we learned this, le we learned this this week. Um, since you said it's such, such a big project to, for you to do it on your own, I suggest you could put it on the idea lab as well and get track record. And maybe the next phase, once you analyze big, medium, small Wikipedia, um, other Wikipedia projects, is to uh, come up with like an another phase of the project where you could analyze what could be done to address the issues that are leading to a uh, decline in retention of m editors. So uh, this, I'm working on this project as part of my IEG. Uh, so initially, I had hoped to generate the graphs and the analysis and everything in six months. Uh, so I've kind of realized I can't do all of that. <laughs> so, so I should probably do what you're suggesting, yeah. Uh, I guess I have run out of time. So. Any last questions and we'll be done. I think there's one minute left. Uh, hello, thank you very much for the presentation. I like very much the visualization. And I think that it, it makes clear uh, this retention uh, problem. Uh, my question would be, uh, what is your main working hypothesis on uh, why this uh, um, thing is happening? Because uh, uh, I see that it happens both in very small wikis and very large wikis and they are very different environments. So uh, 
specifically with respect to the english wikipedia uh, what i think is happening is that the new the very newcomers like the people who are joining this month they are they are leaving at a higher rate and also the people who have been in the project for say 3 months or 4 months or 5 months mm -hmm. their rate of uh, quitting the project is also higher than what it was in 2007 or 2005 so i think it's a combination of both that's leading to the decline and the flatlining so you're implying that the bots are responding to people in a way that uh, produces them an annoyance so they leave no i'm not saying the bots alone i think even the experienced hmm. people are leaving probably because they're bored or they can't find new work or for whatever reason i don't have an answer for that yet mm. but uh, you're going to introduce a variable to continue with the research yes and uh, and you're thinking about bots effect I, uh, on the retention yeah, yeah. i'm uh, yeah i'm i'm also trying to understand uh, how different you know slightly experienced editors are from you know newbies what kind of how the work is different etc Yeah, I think I've run out of time and I should probably <laughs> stop it now. Thank you. Thank you.